Let me start by telling you why we took the, this concept of prospective design at the University, Federal University of Technology, Paraná. We uh, had to create a graduate program in design, the first one in this university in 2019. But uh, the National Research Agency said we don't have so much money, so we will only accept proposals that are truly innovative. Then we went to look around the world where were the most innovative uh, graduate design programs, and we came to the Carnegie Mellon University Transition Design Program. We were very much inspired, but once we started to discuss among our group, we came to the conclusion that we could not just import a transition design program to Brazil. We have to adapt because in our reality, to, to start off, off uh, the word transition wouldn't be so easy to translate and it wasn't the concept uh, as disseminated in the public discourse as it was in the US. So transition design, design de transição in Portuguese wouldn't make so much sense. So first of all, we decided to translate, to create another concept uh, called prospective design and to relate to other approaches, other design approaches that were more uh, relevant to our uh, country, to our cultural situation. And the first thing is that I want to now show you the conceptual changes that we also did to fit our situation. You typically, transition design works in this uh, move uh, from the present time to the future time in, a, uh, in using series of methods called, for example, forecasting and then backcasting. Uh, going to the future and then coming back to see what you can do close to the present. Speculative design is staying mostly in this alternative future space. Uh, speaking about things that might happen in the future or might not happen, but you should mind about your futures because it will come. <laughs> so they have these categories like uh, desirable uh, or preferable, probable futures, so you can figure out which kind of future do you want. But prospective design is much more focused on the present, what you can do now, because in the past, in our history, in Brazil, we face this phenomenon of the domestication of the future, which dom legitimates the colonization of the present with never fulfilling promises. So the future for us is not something that we are striving towards or either that we feel we have a handle of it, for example. Uh, and therefore we decide to focus on the transitions to alternative presents to avoid this domestication of the future. This is a philosophical discussion that I will not go too much into details because there is a paper coming out in the future, <laughs> here's a catch, called Existential Time and Historicity Interaction Design. But what do you mean by alternative presence? Remember those categories of the futures that, that used by speculative design? We bring them to the present. So we look at the present as if it was a space of possibilities that are not uh, under the radar, that, that are not in the radar, but they are under the radar, but we can also build up consciousness of all of these possibilities that are there lying for us to use by expanding what we consider to be possible uh, with the probable, with the unlikely, with the impossible, even with the unthinkable frames of reference. So the practical matters of doing prospective design is to look for these possibilities that are lying around us that we didn't realize they were there. Drawing relationships. Why you think that something is probable, then you realize something is unlikely, but then you explore that. And it might be that the unlikely, the impossible, and the unthinkable turns out to be possible. If we figure out this uh, relationship between the possible and the unthinkable, the unthinkable just becomes a new possible. <laughs> we bring the possibilities closer inside the, uh, the current frame of reference that people are willing to act. That is not uh, discussed in an abstract way uh, about things that are to come in the future. This is really uh, discussing what we can do with the things that we are have now in the present, with the people, the institutions that we have now, with the current laws. Well, how can we change the relations between those laws, between these people, between these institutions, so that 
we can uh, have a new possible that uh, is more sustainable or is more just or is more democratic depending on the, uh, the kind of uh, presence that we want in terms of alternatives, right? Which alternative do we want to have right now? And we want to fight and strive for uh, shifting, transitioning to that alternative possible that is already there right now. So it's much more motivating. It's not a promise. It's a reality that we can transform right now. If we consider that in relation to design theory, we could say that uh, protective design is focused on the fourth order of design, according to Richard Buckner. Uh, instead of telling that the fourth order is focused on system, designing systems as, or the focus on thinking, uh, I would say that it's focused on relations, designing relations, because many uh, different totalities in our world cannot be described or well described as a system. For example, the family, religion, uh, even nations um, cannot be described as a system. You can describe, but then it might not deal with all the totalities. You might miss something. Therefore, we focus on this smaller concept of relation that is uh, common in different totalities. So a system is composed of multiple relations, but also is the family, also is the nation, also is the company, also is the activity and many other um, fourth order concepts. We went to the internet looking for the current state of uh, design regarding relations. And we came, uh, we came to the conclusion by looking at the responses to COVID-19 pandemic in, to, in early 2019 that most designers focus too much on information and experience, respectively the first and second order of design, and too little on uh, interactions and relations, respectively the third and fourth order of design. You see that uh, less uh, connected solutions to uh, problems uh, related to this weakness of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And then we, we came to ourselves, we asked ourselves, why aren't designers prospecting new relations? One of the uh, theoretical explanations for that is that designers are too much focused on individual things, individual people, individual institutions. They look at the objective qualities of each of these things as their realm, as their space of possibilities. They are not so used to see things connecting together and generating relational qualities which are emergent that depends on different things, on farrier things, on several things connected in a particular way. Therefore, uh, we decided to prospect new relations in the present, but then first to realize these relational qualities. So design is the need to perceive that. And we started develop, uh, developing some design projects aimed at this relational qualities on the right side of the screen you see sustainability, resiliency, equity, solidarity, conviviality, and mobility. All of these qualities are new vocabularies uh, for design students and design practitioners. They are typically more used to what you see on the left side of the screen. Objective qualities like usability, accessibility, durability, utility, beauty, and clarity. All of those objective quality they don't depend on one thing or at least two things but uh, relational qualities they are properties of very uh, big totalities that include systems but also include other uh, complex entities that have multiple things multiple people and these relational qualities cannot be designed by designers alone working at the studio in front of their computer they need to be designed with the related people and with the related things. So uh, they need to go to the field, they need to uh, engage with the relations and that relation will unfold through time. So it's not something that you can grasp right ahead beforehand. Uh, let me show us a bit of uh, some projects that we are uh, developing here in Brazil inspired by this uh, relational qualities and also the concept of alternative presence. Corais platform has been developed for more than 10 years now. It's a digital infrastructure that enables, among many different relations, solidarity economy relations, which means creating their own banks, printing their own money based on a different economic relationship that is not uh, focused on competition 
and uh, self uh, success uh, and business making and capital accumulation. It's really much more focused on local achievements and community bonds and solidarity emotions. Uh, together with several uh, culture producers across Brazil, we designed this um, digital money uh, feature that enabled all sorts of different uh, new business. For example, this um, theater university uh, didn't have money, it was, they were facing budget cuts from the government, then they printed their own money and then they kept doing their classes using this uh, digital platform. And it's not like we don't design things in prospective design. We do, but then we design them to enable those relations. The relation is the end and not uh, the product. For example, we have a book called Coralizando. This book uh, shares ex accumulated experience of all the different uh, actors uh, working in this platform. And it's a product. However, it's a product that enables new relations because other collectives that came after this book, they read the book and they could use um, the information there to craft their relations in a certain way. So we are always relating things and relating people. It's another, another example is much more uh, similar to what you can do as a graduate student in design. Uh, for example, this is actually an undergrad student uh, project but this student was really went beyond what is currently expected from the grad study, student. She uh, went to the rural women coffee worker and find, found out that these women didn't, uh, were not recognized by the work, for their work. The product were, didn't have their names uh, and they didn't uh, know what to do <laughs> to, be, to get uh, consumers and society to become more aware of this uh, uh, invisible women work and what this designer do did she went to the women coffee worker at the city <laughs> urban women coffee worker the baristas the coffee dealers and she asked her, what do you think about this did you know that this coffee that you sell here is made by women in the rural community they got really excited because then we can join forces and <laughs> fight sexism which is also an issue for coffee workplaces uh, and then they joined forces they formed this a coalition and they even managed to influence uh, a public policy that was being uh, developed by uh, Maria Leticia a, a local uh, councilwoman and she uh, included the barista workers the coffee workers uh, in the city to become protected in a new law uh, uh, that was generalized for uh, women workplace safety, but then specifically having addressing the needs of the barista workers thanks to this coalition formed by all these uh, strong women. Uh, we started doing this kind of exercise of uh, making sense of new uh, relations in our department uh, by using legal and other ways of materializing relations and prospecting relations that could be there. That, they're just not being used. For example, we came up with this laborative of design against oppression, LADO. After uh, talking with uh, three different professors, including me in our department, that were already doing some design projects against oppression. Then we just uh, started this lab. Uh, also, we started the Prospectina, which is a, a, a combined uh, workshop with many different uh, departments in our university that try to uh, think about the future of our university after the pandemic, for example. Uh, we have many different engagements, as I mentioned. I would not go so much into details about these engagements. I would just take this one. Community engagements are where we really change uh, the situation we are now, and the transition to this alternative presence. Again, Marie Leticia, uh, councilwoman, uh, we uh, had this conversation about women coffee work and then later on during the COVID-19 pandemics we developed together this um, map of uh, the controversy around COVID-19 uh, in Brazil and we presented to her and then she uh, discussed and tried to understand that all the different uh, uh, contradictions that were rising to the top for example we managed to map uh, the relationship between uh, 
the situation where people need to stay home and not having a proper home to stay or not even having a home and the relationship between um, the the prejudice that people that were having this disease were facing by being isolated from the families or from the friends and especially people that were supposed to be uh, uh, sick and not being really sick yeah? for example people would think that uh, someone with a black skin would be more dangerous because that person would not have uh, good hygiene and that's of course the racism connected to the conditions for living and uh, it's very difficult to do interventions in this COVID-19 pandemic where we don't have we have so much uncertainty so what Maria Leticia did she just took a part of this map and started to work concentrated on a few points a few contradictions that she could uh, do something about it meaningfully and our students though we also uh, use the same map uh, to start our own outreach activities that we could do for example we um, discovered that the public or official communication campaign was not really addressing the needs of people living at the outskirts of this uh, city. Uh, these people, they were usually black or brown, but the, all the official campaign had white people there. <laughs> they didn't feel like the campaign was telling to them something meaningful because they, for example, you should not tell them just to stay at home and wash your clothes because some of these people didn't have water. We were going through a, uh, a water shortage um, uh, season and uh, some homes didn't have a uh, water supply, uh, so how could you wash your hand? And the official campaign didn't, matter, didn't take this into account, but our students did. And then we did some kind of uh, local interventions over there with uh, marginalized communities doing this kind of popular communication, popular design uh, production. So we produce uh, uh, products, we produce graphic design, uh, materials, we produce experiences and services, but that's not uh, the main goal. This is more like a mediation, a means to reach a goal, which is discovering relations that are already possible in our alternative presence here and now. So this is the, basically what we are thinking about prospective design right now. We want to develop it further and there are many different uh, uh, other concepts that we already have developed and that we put into use in our projects. But to summarize the most important thing, this is it. Focus on what is possible right now, uh, trying to um, put relations into work that are already there. Thank you very much.